Hi filmmakers, it's Kerry with Filmmaker Central. And today we're talking about exposure, ISO, shutter, aperture, all these things. And while this would be an entire course, <laughs> we're gonna try and get to the basics in one video. And this was because somebody asked for it about the Mavic 3. But what we're gonna talk about is gonna apply to any camera. So sit down, have yourself a cup of coffee, or whatever caffeinated beverage you want, because this is gonna be a good one here. Let's get to it when we come right back. So someone asked if I could explain the camera settings, the ISO, shutter, and all that. So I did, I did the video on that to show how you can set all those things. But then the question came up, well, why? Which ones do I change? How do I know what to do? And that really is photography or videography 101, understanding exposure. And it can take people many, many years to really grasp how all these different things relate to each other. And there's big photography classes and there's tons of stuff online about how to learn how to do exposure properly. But I'm gonna give you a good rundown that will hopefully set the stage for you to go on and learn more about it. Now, the cameras that we're, we're gonna be talking about here, the Mavic 3 or the Sony's or things like that, they're gonna have three different settings. The ISO, the shutter speed, and the aperture. Now, when you're talking about something like a GoPro, you don't have an aperture. You may have shutter speed and you have ISO, but there's no aperture. So some things are gonna to relate to all cameras. Others may or may not relate to every camera because not all cameras have all these features. So what are these things? What is ISO? What is aperture? So ISO is, well, a lot of people uh, instructors will tell you that changing the ISO, increasing the ISO up to a higher number changes the sensitivity of the sensor so it's more sensitive to light. Okay, my Mavic got GPS down here in the basement. Um, but it, it does not increase the sensitivity of the sensor. What it does is it applies a software gain to boost the signal coming from the sensor. So think of it like the amplifier or your stereo in your, your car or something, right? As you, you crank up the volume, there's gonna be a sweet spot, right? There's gonna be a spot where things sound good. You're not, it's not too low that it's just missing stuff and it's not so high that it gets distorted. And that's kind of like ISO, right? If it's too high, you're gonna, get artifacts and it's called digital noise. There, there's, you don't get something for nothing. If you're boosting that ISO, you're going to introduce digital noise. Now, some cameras are way better at it than others. So the, the newest Sony cameras can easily shoot at 25,000, 50,000 ISO and the images look fantastic. The camera I'm shooting on right now is Sony a7 III. Remarkable camera in low light conditions. The Mavic, you know, anywhere past about 800 and you're going to start seeing a lot of digital noise. You know, the, my little Sony here, I can shoot this at 1600. It's going to work really fine. So when we're adjusting our ISO, what we want to do is run the lowest number possible to get the exposure that we need so that we're not introducing digital noise. Now, some cameras have a base ISO that's fairly high, like 400 or 800, some are even higher. So those are gonna give you the best results is if you know what the base ISO is of your camera. So adjusting your, your ISO, that's gonna to be to help boost the amount of perceived light coming into the camera so that you get the best results in low light. But we want to try and keep it at the lowest number possible. Now, let's see if we can uh, crank this guy up here. So I've got my aperture at eight, my shutter's at 160. 
my ISO's at 400. I mean, we can't see anything in this room here. And it's dark. I mean, this, this is a dark room. So, but let's try cranking this up. So this will go to 6400 ISO. And now we can start to see some stuff back there. Uh, still, this only goes to 6400 ISO. So I'm not going to be able to get as much light as I want. Okay. So let's talk about aperture. Now, that's what your action cameras don't have is an aperture. And what that is, it's a physical apparatus that opens or closes to allow more or less light in. Okay. So this little Sony has it, the Mavic has it, and that's great. So you can adjust how much light you want to come in. So here, even though we're at 6,400 ISO, we're just not getting a lot of light in. So I'm going to go and I'll, crank this down to 2.8. Now, what may seem counterintuitive is the lower that aperture number, the more open the camera is. So at 2.8, it's as open as it's going to get. At 11, it's going to be a tiny little pinhole. Again, you don't get something for nothing, right? As you adjust that aperture, your depth of field will change. So a 2.8 aperture is going to have a very narrow area that can be in focus. And this is great for certain types of shots, like especially portrait shots, where you want the subject in focus, but you want the background all blurred out. So you're going to run wide open, like a 2.8, and it's going to let the most amount of light in. If we run f11, trying to do a portrait shot, everything is going to be in focus. So depending on what you're trying to do with a drone, you may want to adjust that aperture, but at the distances that we're shooting, generally anyway, from the air, aperture doesn't make that big of a difference, but it does help adjust the amount of light coming through. So as we saw here, opening up that aperture is going to allow more light to come in. Closing it down is gonna make it darker. So if we're trying to get our exposure proper, then we can use that aperture. And that is one of the key benefits of like the Mavic 2 Pro and the Mavic 3 over the Air 2S. The Air 2S does not have adjustable aperture. Therefore, you can't use that extra feature to adjust your exposure. Okay, so that's our aperture. Our final one is our shutter speed. And shutter speed is just how fast is it clicking that off? And it's the same whether you're doing stills or photography or stills or video, you can set your shutter speed. And if there's too much light, increase the shutter speed. And we can probably see that in effect here. We have a very fast shutter speed. It's super dark. We go the other way and we see more light. So the longer the shutter speed, the more light that comes in. Where's the trade-off there, right? Well, the trade-off is going to be motion blur. If you have a long shutter speed and you're moving, everything's just gonna be blurry. On the flip side, if you have a very fast shutter speed and you're moving or anything, everything's gonna look too sharp. There's not gonna be any motion blur and that can actually cause like this stuttering effect in the video. So you wanna find a shutter speed that really works. Now, when we're shooting video, what we tend to do is shoot double our frame rate. So if I'm shooting at 30 frames per second, 30 frames per second, I wanna double that, 60. So I want 1 60th of a second shutter speed. If I'm gonna be shooting at 60 frames per second, I want 1 120th shutter speed, okay? So I wanna double that frame rate, 24 frames per second, 148th, oh, that doesn't exist. So go to 150th, right? You wanna be as close to that double as possible for the correct motion blur for your shot. So that's, now let's kind of put all this together when it comes down to what settings do we really want to try and stick with on something like this. So, well, first pick your frame rate, right? Are you shooting at 24 frames per second? 30 frames per second, 60 frames per second. Okay, well, 
that's your shutter. That's that's your frame rate. I'm I'm generally shooting at 30 frames per second. All my stuff is going on YouTube. I like the way it looks. So if I'm shooting 30 frames per second, well, I'm going to come over here and I'm going to set my shutter speed to 1 60th. So now that one's pretty locked. So I'm not going to use that to adjust my exposure. Okay. So now I have to only really use ISO and shutter. Uh, I'm sorry, ISO and aperture. Well, now as we talked, I want to have the lowest ISO possible to get the shot. So I'm going to try and run at 100 to 400 ISO. Now in, like I said, in the studio here, it's too dark. We're not going to see anything. But if I was in bright sunlight, I'd want to be at ISO 100. I'm already at 1 60th of a shutter speed. And now I can adjust my aperture to get the light that I want. So generally, <laughs> generally speaking, my ISO is locked down to being the lowest it can. My shutter speed is locked down to be double my frame rate. So the only thing I have to adjust is my aperture to get what the, the exposure that I want. Now, what happens when, well, if it's too dark, right? Well, the only thing we can adjust at that point, if we're wide open, we have to increase the ISO. Well, if it's bright sunlight and we're already down as low as we can go at ISO 100 and we've cranked our aperture down as much as we can, F8, F11, and it's still too bright. The exposure is just way too bright. And that happens here in Colorado a lot where we just can't get the, the exposure right. It's just too bright when our ISO is as low as it can be, our aperture is as close as it can be, and I don't want to touch my shutter speed. So what do we do? Well, that's where neutral density filters come in place. Now, if you just bought the Mavic 3 and an extra battery or something, then you didn't get any ND filters. If you bought the Flymore kit or the Cine, then you got a range of ND filters. And that's great. That can help you tremendously. So on a normal bright day here in Colorado, I'm going to put the ND16 filter on here. Now what that's going to do is it's going to cut down the amount of light coming into the camera. It's not going to change the color. It's not going to do anything like that, but it, it is just going to cut down the amount of light. Now my camera's in a good range that I can work with. I can stick with my ISO 100. I can stick with my 1 60th of a second and I can adjust my aperture to really fine tune that exposure and get it exactly how I want. So how do we make sure that we have the right exposure? Well, on our screen, we have our histogram. And right now I'm looking at this histogram and it's showing it's underexposed. Well, I can see that from the image as well, but the histogram is showing where the light is. Well, it's not showing any, it's basically a bad shot right here. Uh, I'm going to turn this around and I'll point it up back up at me here. Now we can see some activity on the histogram. So it's starting to move, but what I want is I want the peaks to be either right in the middle or just right of the middle. So uh, if I look in the bottom right hand corner of the fly app, it'll say MM minus one. So that's telling me I'm one stop underexposed. So now I need to do something. Well, I've already got my 160 for the second. I'm at my F 2.8, so I'm as wide open as I can be. So now I have to increase my ISO. And if I take this to 200, because I'm doubling it, now I can see that my that my metering there is showing zero. So it says that it's perfectly exposed. Now, in most cases, that's gonna be fine. If you're shooting in the natural format on here, zero is going to be ideal. However, if you're shooting in D log, you want that to be like plus three to plus seven. So we'll just go ahead and move that up to ISO 400. And now our exposure for D log is going to be better. So if I come over here, go to my camera, go to D log, 
Yeah, it's going to be look all washed out, but I'm going to have the right exposure for D-Log. So hopefully this all has made some sense and is giving you some good direction on where to start, whether it's a Mavic 3, a Mavic 2, or you know any other camera, helping to understand that correlation between ISO, shutter speed, and aperture. Once you kind of understand that and you find some good starting points that work for you, well, then you're gonna be really well off. And like I said, with the Mavic 3, I want low ISO, I want my shutter speed to be double my frame rate, and I want my aperture to just be pretty much anywhere as long as it's helping me get the exposure that I want. So that is a pretty, um, uh, probably an, an oversimplified look at understanding exposure. And certainly I could go on and on and on about the nuances of each one of these things, but I wanted to give you a basics to get started so that you had a good starting point when you switch from auto into that pro mode, what do you do next? So thanks for watching. This has been Kerry with Filmmaker Central. I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.